I pass every time you start need to like clap your hands. <laughs> Alright, cool. Uh so hello. Uh this is uh my third time doing this. Our <laughs> photo passing podcast. And uh today our topic will be talking about business and uh respite or, or rest. So I brought two of my classmates with me today, John and Sham, to come and talk to me and talk to us about uh, what they do on a daily basis and like um, how they manage their time. Lah. So uh, before we begin, maybe we can introduce each of them. Uh, John, would you like to tell us about yourself? Hi, I'm, I'm John, I'm Ethan's <laughs> classmate. Uh, yeah, we met in uh, year one uh, through uh, Christian Fellowship. Uh, yeah, and uh, one interesting thing about myself is I do fencing. Sham? I don't know about <laughs> Just introduce yourself, man. Hi, I'm Shamin. Um, I... <laughs> I don't say <laughs> Okay, oh. wait, I get it. No, just, just continue. You are Charmaine and... Uh... Okay, wait, wait, okay, okay. Hi, I'm Charmaine. Um, <laughs> Ethan and I were on the same team in year two. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So, uh, today we'll be talking about what our business is. Uh, because uh, now in our, uh, I guess, society, like, at least in Singapore, there's a lot of emphasis on doing a lot. Uh, like people stay past like their working hours to finish up assignments. They try to uh, do more than what they're required for their job scope, and that is also reflected in our schools where like there's so much time spent on like really pursuing like um, knowledge and pursuing like that perfection in our scores. So uh, I just thought it would be quite nice to talk about what business is to some of my peers and some of uh, my friends. Uh, so yeah, like my first question today will be to ask them about uh, whether they are busy people. Yeah, so if you are ready to share, you can like go ahead. Like, do you think you are a busy person? John? Sure, sure, I can, I can start. Um, I, I would say that, yeah, I think I'm quite a busy person. Yeah, uh, most of my days I come home pretty late and I don't have much free time to do other things. Yeah, um, uh, most of my time is actually spent on fencing because I, I represent uh, Singapore overseas. Uh, and so a lot of my time is spent on trainings and doing strength and conditioning in the gym as well uh, on top of my uh, commitments to school. Yeah. Mm. Shaman? Mm. Yes and no. Um, for the most part, I think most people would say I'm a busy person because um, I think I have a lot of interests that I like to pursue. Um, yeah, that leads me to just really um, like make time for a lot of these things. And sometimes I think my attention span might be a bit divided and I get very tired easily. So I think on the surface, I do seem very busy. Um, but I think also um, another part about being busy that I think maybe we'll talk about later is um, the idea of um, like how much mind space activities are taking up in you and how how you perceive business and what business really means to you. So for that, I think I'm kind of not say on like the extreme end of business, but I think things could have been better. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe you can like explore more about like this idea of like uh, a mind space. Like, what do you mean by like um you know like different people have different levels of like defining what business is and like. Maybe you could tell me more about like your own like levels for that. Yeah. Okay, so I guess um I guess mind space to me is so how okay, I think I think recently some of my friends have been drawing up um like a schematic diagram of say how much time they are spending on things. So most people would draw a pie chart and dividing it into let's say amount of time they spend in school or on um like CCAs or like hall activities. Um for me, what I did at the start of my second year was to draw a brain instead and to draw actually how much mind space activities were taking up in my brain rather than time. Because I think sometimes, um, even though let's say I spend a lot of time in school, but sometimes I might be thinking about some other small activity that could just be taking up one hour of my week, but that occupies a lot of my mental, um, like my mental strength. And that kind of like sucks out a lot of energy from me. It makes me like less productive. So I think at those times, even though I'm very busy, but I'm not actually very productive in the things that I'm doing. So I think that um, 
for me, it's more important to be productive than just busy as a whole because we could be spending a lot of time on things that are necessary um, but it, it won't yield as much fruit as opposed to if we're actually productive. Mm, I see, I see. Yeah, and I think for myself, like, I would say, uh, like, comparatively to some of my batchmates, to my friends in school, or even, like, uh, friends from my junior college, at this point in time, uh, I may not be, like, the most busy per se, but I feel like uh, at this time, I'm still, like, I have very limited time to do a lot of things that I enjoy. Um, perhaps it's school like taking its toll on me or maybe I'm just not as efficient as others, I'm not sure. But like, in some sense, I am kind of busy. But I think I, w I would say I'm more busy last time when I was in um, secondary school or junior college where I was doing both school and also like uh, my own CCA, which was water polo, which really took a lot of time. I, I spent like three hours uh, I think four times a week training on top of school, on top of like church and other commitments. La. Yeah, so as of now, I guess like the time that I spend, mo most of my time is spent really on uh, studying, uh, spent on like uh, building relationships with my friends. And I think these are the two most important things to me. Yeah, but with respect to like business and school, like one important thing that I have that comes to my mind is really this idea of time management. So like maybe like, you too because like both of my friends are two very to me very respected people like i respect them a lot for like their discipline and their like strengths and like how they're able to do so much with like the same amount of time as i i have so like, i really want to know like uh, how they do it how they manage their time like like how they manage their fatigue and all of this stuff michelle you want to go first you can share about that oh okay so i guess um <laughs> i haven't Relax, been <laughs> I think I haven't really been a very good example of what it means to spend my time wisely. I think often when people ask me for like prayer pointers or prayer requests, often I say time management. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think first of all is the mind space like method for me helped me in um, time management because it helped me sort out what my priorities were and it helped me to catch myself whenever I was spending too long on a task because for me, I'm someone who likes to make things the best that I can make it. Um, so. It could like cause me to spend excessive amount of time on something when it could have just been done in a very short amount. Yeah. Um, in terms of how I split my time, I think every person's different, and I think that. Um, okay, sorry. I really forgot the question. What was the question? <laughs> how do you manage your time? <laughs> oh. <Yeah. laughs> um, you have to relax, Sean. <laughs> I actually don't know eh. Okay, I guess for me, I I do like, I make a timetable lah that I use to, like. Um, kind of have a routine of how like I start off the day with something and I end the day off with something like a task I need to do for that day and in between I think I try not to pack so many things in between um, so that it gives me space for me to fill up other like other routine tasks that I need to do such as like studying um, or catching up on certain commitments that I need to to do because the kind of commitments that I'm in it's not like perhaps like a sport that is very like structured in terms of the training times but for me it's a lot of ad hoc work and tasks mm. that I need to do for projects so I think, um, yeah, those having a routine really helps for these kinds of um, very ad hoc projects because you could um, like lose track of time easily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. John, um, for for me, I don't think I'm that big of a planner actually. Um, though I do fill up my time with quite a lot of things, I'm I'm not one that really allocates a fixed amount of time for certain things. I think for me, it's just rather I've been I've adapted to the things I have to do because I've been doing them for so long. Mm. For example, my trainings have primarily been on the same days for like six years in a row now. And oh. so it's, it's kind of the same routine and I know which days I have to go for certain training. So there are certain days where I perhaps can't do certain things like go out with my friends and eat and stuff like that. And yeah, so that's how I kind of allocate my time. And for me, even though I'm busy, I think there are certain non-negotiables uh, for me that regardless of how busy I am, I try to get in a bit of time for. For example, like um, sports or exercising in general, I think um, I can't go a few days without exercising because I just feel quite bad. And, and so I try to work some time in, regardless of how busy I am to actually exercise um, at least once or once every two days. Um, yeah, and for me, I, I feel like even though I'm busy because I love the things I do so much, that it doesn't really feel like a chore. Mm. And it's still very exciting to, every, to go to training and constantly being, be able to, to work on your craft and something that you love so much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
I agree. I like both of your approaches to like how you manage your time. I think like um, for me, the most important thing is having something to go back to, something that you always look forward to. Like ideally, like John, like it should be something that you're you're doing on a consistent basis, like your fencing. Like uh, like maybe it's just an activity that you really like to do at the end of the day that you like you push yourself through like uh, all the the stressful studying or like the the difficult tasks that you have to complete throughout the day to reach that angle. And just like how you talked about non negotiable, similarly, I think. Uh, uh, these are the things that really keep me grounded in where I'm at and keeps me going and motivated. So like for me, I try to wake up like earlier in the morning for this year because uh, year three for uh, my school, yeah, it's, a, it's a lot harder than like um, year one and year two because we're going to the clinics, right? So like having a routine of waking up early, um, reading, for me, reading the Bible, reading a book or like praying, singing some songs or like just having some time alone journaling, like these things like help me to stabilize and prepare myself for the day to come. So like uh, even if uh, sometimes through the day studying seems very impossible or the people that I'm meeting with like are very difficult, I think to some extent I still find a lot of joy. I find a lot of like uh, like comfort and accomplishment uh, regardless of how it goes because I know that I've started the day well and that um, I have like, these habits that help me to push myself forward. Uh, yeah. And like, because we, we talk about um, busyness as a, as like, I wouldn't say like a plague, but it is a common thing that happens in our lives since young up to now. Like for children, especially Asian Chinese kids, we're like pushed to learn a musical instrument, like uh, for John violin or like piano, or like uh, for girls like ballet or like dancing and things like that. And then when we're going to, uh, when we go into primary school, we have, we have tuitions all the way up to like junior college and then we have CCAs. And then we have uni, we have army and all these things are always like kind of making, like making life seem like a flurry, like a hurricane. Uh, and like for me not having a consistent like anchor or a, a solid bedrock for me to fall back on, I will definitely lose track of my time. Uh. Yeah, so like, I think what Sean mentioned just now, like uh, about how you have to know where your headspace is and like uh, which areas of your life you're giving too much thought to, which areas of your life that you might be like just kind of in a way wasting your time on. Like we can think about how we can properly restructure our lives again. We think about uh, what, are impo what, what are important things to you. And yeah, I, <laughs> I don't really know where I'm going with this. La. But essentially what I'm saying is that like, you know, our society is really very busy and like sometimes you get lost in this in this tornado and this storm of like thoughts and like sometimes you get burnt out right yeah, yeah. so i guess like i can just shift like the conversation about towards like burnt out because burnout is quite scary it's like when you're like emotionally and very physically drained like you you find yourself caught in a rut you can't really like motivate yourself to do things yeah so maybe my question is like um have you guys been burnt out before have you felt like you're burnt out yeah, John. Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're um, so stiff. Yeah, I think I think burnout is quite a serious problem because um, we tend to fill our time with so many things that we don't really we subconsciously do these things and we don't really engage with these things like fully, and so we just kind of like glide along every single day, not knowing where our head or where our heart is at. Mm. And so I think for me personally, I I have burnt out uh, several times over a few years. Um, I think on one aspect definitely be sport. Um, I think sport is such an achievement driven thing and sometimes when you fail to see improvement, you fail to see results and you start to question why you are constantly pushing yourself, constantly sacrificing um, time to do these things when you could be spending time elsewhere like spending more time with your friends, spending more time studying mm -hmm. and that's when you start to question really, uh, whether um, you really still like the sport and whether you still want to pursue it. Yeah. And I think that that happened for me several times after uh, several competitions where I failed to perform at my best. And I think at the end of the day, uh, what, what my coach kind of reminded me was that um, first of all, we don't do the sport because we want to achieve something. It's more we started the sport because we love it and it brings us joy to do it. And that mm. should be the, the main motivating factor behind why we even do a sport in the first place. And if we don't find joy from that, then perhaps it's time to move on. And I think on the studying front as well, I think definitely there has been times of burnout. Um, I think most recently because um, of new restrictions during the COVID pandemic, having to stay at home constantly, having online lessons on a day-to-day -day basis where you're just facing a screen for like hours on end. 
has really taken a toll uh, and and there was a time before my uh, summative exams this year that I actually burnt out for two weeks and you just wake up not feeling like studying at all even though you know that your exams are impending and I think um, it was quite a rut that was very hard to get out of yeah mm. um, <coughs> I think <laughs> sorry <coughs> uh, for me I think personally I have not burnt out per se I'm very fortunate and very blessed to have gone through I think many years of doing a lot of things but not having to reach I, I guess a stage where I was uh, very I guess mentally unavailable to like take in any more things but I would say that um, for me I think a struggle that I faced while being busy was um, coping with the pur- dying of purpose. I think cause as we keep doing something, especially if let's say projects or um, commitments or even like um, choosing to invest in a certain talent or skill, um, it does take um, every every year. It's you would think that it's like a renewal of your purpose, but for me, it o- it's always been um, like what would be the opportunity cost of stopping it there and then and how much more value could I add if I stayed one more year in mm. and so I think <coughs> for me because of that I lost purpose for a few for a few things that I, I was doing um, recently yeah and I think how I recognized it I guess was when when I when I realized that no longer I started to procrastinate the task that I was supposed to do and that I was no longer um, having that same sense of like joy and excitement doing those things I think that that's when I realized that I have lost my purpose in doing those and more than that I think also where I placed my identity in was it in like all these things that I could like take off and all these things I could do um, which I realized later on that it's really about um, I guess your whole holistic being la, which I think also related to like what you said just now um, about like you know you respecting so many people who are busy I think I myself also look up to a lot of people who can do a lot of things and achieve a lot of things um, all over the world and I think Elon Musk really um, is someone who has achieved so much but yet um, he did say that there were so many sacrifices that had to be made and so I think whenever like I or I, know, I guess whoever else is watching this um, admires people who have done so much I think it's also for us to think about what are some things that they could have um, like short change along the way what are some um, uh, things that they had to give up mm. and I think those I think if we're not willing to give up uh, like a lot of things that say like time with family or time for ourselves um, while doing these things, I think it's time to like relook and see that maybe I should be less like so-called busy. Yeah. Mm, yeah. <clears throat> I think the first instance of burnout that came to me was uh, probably in uh, Sec 3 when I was 15, about oh, six years ago really. So at the time, I was trying to uh, gun for a spot at a national team uh, for water polo. So I trained very hard in December of 2015. I trained three times a day, five times a week, which is disgusting. So like, basically that, what I meant was like, I would wake up at like seven, I'll go to school, train and take a nap and train in the afternoon with the school, come home, sleep for like 15, 20 minutes and then get ready to go down to the stadium to train for a third time. Yeah. And since like my coach at the time for Hua Chong was also the same coach for the national team, like, Wow, he put me through hell, man. And although the first week, first two weeks felt okay, it felt good because like, like what Sham said about purpose, I felt like, wow, I'm, I'm improving, I'm getting more fit, uh, I'm getting better at like doing this certain like uh, maneuver, I'm getting better at like doing this. But then afterwards, it came to a point where I found myself really losing so much motivation. Like maybe because there wasn't community at that place, maybe because like I just just wasn't cut out for this kind of intense training or maybe I just uh, shortchanged myself of time from, uh, for myself and with my family. So yeah, that's when I felt really burnt out. I just didn't really feel like getting out of bed. I didn't feel like doing anything at all. I just wanted to just, just disappear for a while. Right? And I, I guess other instances would probably be like what John experienced. Uh, but mine was in year one. Uh, when COVID first hit, like I was really like kind of kept alone. Like, at least in year two, I had more friends to study together with on online platforms like Discord and Zoom. But in year one, I was really doing everything alone. Uh, and I guess the common thing for me when it comes to burnout is when I deprive myself of uh, 
human relations. Uh, I think that is something that's non-negotiable for me. As much as I want to pursue different things, like uh, now maybe my hobby of like doing things like this, or maybe uh, exercising or studying, I need to make sure that I do not exchange and shortchange myself of human relations, especially with my family and my close friends. Uh, but most importantly, with my with God. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I I think like. Burnout is really a big problem and uh, a lot of people burn out without even knowing why they are burning out because like they're just doing the same thing routinely every day. Uh, yeah, and like, I think maybe now it would be a good time to talk about like maybe our own like thoughts about how we can protect ourselves from burnout. Maybe uh, perhaps how we recover from it and how we want to protect ourselves from falling back into it in, in time to come. Yeah, yeah. Shall we go first? Yeah, sure. Um Okay, I guess um, you would never really know when you are going to burn out until you're in that state. So I think for me, how I, I guess deal with it is really like, start from prevention. <laughs> so like, I first start off, I guess before, for me, okay, my, my measure is usually at the start of academic year because that's how I think things go right now in my stage of life, which is like schooling. So I guess at the start of every acad year, I would try to like, I think outline, like I said, like a hit space model thing, mm. try to make sure that I... I am aware of um, things that I have to commit to and sometimes even have like a little buffer for like unforeseen circumstances. I think, oh yes, recently I also felt sick and I think that also kind of brought me back to, to the idea of having space and buffer in your mm. schedule always. Yeah. Um, I think after that, it's really about always having time to, I guess, reflect along the way. I think some people um, observe this thing called cyber, which is basically having like it could be a day or maybe an unstructured time of day or even just your own way of uh, making sure you have enough rest in the, in the, in the week. Yeah. Um, and personally, I don't practice like, a full day of rest. I just try to um, be self-aware. It, it could just be like heading to the toilet for a prolonged shower or just slowly walking from place to place, place to place unhurriedly. But having that opportunity for me to just like, recollect about my day and mm. uh, reflection. And of, of, of course, I think also prayer and meditation really help me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <coughs> John? Um, yeah, for me, I, I try to go back to the reason why I, I burned out in the first place. Um, to quote example, I think one of the reasons why I burned out in M2 studying was because I was trying too hard to replicate my success in, in year one. And I think that was caused by a lot of like, external pressure as well. And, and just going back to the reason why I'm in medical school in the first place, and to find joy in studying again mm-hmm. and to learn more. And I think one of the things that helped me during that time was really just reading the Bible more. Um, and I think um, the, early psalm, the early psalms helped me a lot and helped to give me joy and, and reminding me that um, um, God can give us the greatest joy without needing to find any, um, uh, any joy from these worldly things that mm. um, um, the outside world is telling us that we need. And on, on the topic of sports, I think I really just, as I mentioned earlier, just tried to turn back to um, what were some of the reasons that I started uh, doing the sport in the first place. And, and just coming to the realization that sport is not just about achievements, but about the many ways that it, it improves us and it teaches us so much discipline, teaches us to just focus on improving ourselves and getting better, a little bit better every single day. I think that really helped me to push me out of that, that rut. Yeah. Wow. Well, I think that's very, very helpful, like, at least for me now, because I'm quite afraid of what's to come in their tree. But I think, like what they both said, like really knowing your own boundaries about like how far you can go, how far you can push yourself before you start to really lose sight of what's going on, lose sight of what's happening. That's something very important to think about, like setting goals and um, giving yourself like space to I wouldn't say fail but space to like relax space to like yeah. chill and space to like just take a step back like, I think these are all not one for one size fit all remedies but like some little habits that I, I like to put in my own life like uh, Ma- Sean mentioned like this idea of Sabbath I completely don't study on a Saturday I don't do anything I don't I'm not obligated to do anything on Saturdays I just take my own time and just chill with my friends with church and all this and um 
yeah, for me, how I recovered or how I like to protect myself is to have community, to, to have people around me that would really encourage me and uh, I, 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 like people that I have faith in that will really lift me up when I'm going through like the storm. Mm -hmm. Like um, knowing that there are people that I can turn to when I'm crying, when I'm tired, when I'm like just really sick of everything. I think that's the most important thing to me. Yeah, and uh, yeah. And then I guess like some parting words would, uh, we can just share some of our, any other thoughts we have with like our viewers and with each other. I think personally, I think like, um, it's really very important to always know where you're at and you just don't lose yourself. Um, don't lose yourself to, to the business and like how our culture has defined success. Like we always like, there's always something about someone else uh, that we want. There's always something about someone else that we admire and we think we're not doing enough. Like, I mean, looking at John, I, I wonder whether I, if I tried hard enough, I could be a national athlete like him. Or even looking at some of my batchmates who are doing other projects elsewhere, I wonder whether I have been like um, vigilant or like, um, diligent enough in searching out for these opportunities but I also think it's important to give yourself some credit like you remember that um, the things that you are doing currently they are good uh, you, you don't need to compare yourself like you can just think about like the validity of what you're doing like give yourself some credit cut yourself some slack and yeah affirm yourself with your friends with your family I think that's like what I like to do the most when I am really going through a time where I'm like quite down yeah I think for me, um, I guess in the realm of like work-related uh, business, because I know some people out there, they, they are busy for many different reasons. Some have to, let's say, pick up many, many jobs for, for financial reasons. Some people have like a lot of other social issues that they have to take care of. Yeah. So I guess for us, we're talking more like work-related, right? Um, I, I guess for me, my personal tip, I guess, would be like, um, go back to go forward. Because as someone who likes to reflect a lot, I like to um, always like, um, ensure that how I've and, and like evaluate how I've done so far and how I can do things better so that I can make my time more efficient because mm. I believe like productivity over busyness la. yeah so mm. I think to be able to um, invest just that little bit of time to <clears throat> like think about it before we continue it actually is, it's actually more um, it, it make it much more worthwhile than than counterproductive yeah um, for me I think um, someone that gave me uh, advice that really stuck out to me even to today is actually one of the MOs uh, in BMT that I, get, I went through actually. <laughs> and, and it was quite funny because um, I was attending the FFI for disruption and, and he asked me what I was, I was studying and I told him. And, and he said, oh wow. Um, and he told me that if you ever get tired, just remember why you started in the first place. And mm -hmm. I think that is so, so applicable to everything that, that we can we do. Um, our, our motivating uh, factors might be different. It could be family, could be wanting to seek self-improvement. Um, but I think at the end of the day, um, being clear about why you started doing something is so important and it can really help to um, bring us back from being lost in, in burnout or um, being uh, lost in comparing with others and, and what others do. Yeah. All right, cool. I think today like the session was a bit more like I guess a bit more serious, but I think it was it was still good. Like we really managed to share a lot of our thoughts. So I guess with that we can like conclude today's like um episode. Why so weird saying this? Yeah, try guess, again. No, no, it's good. It's good. Yeah. Thank you for watching. I hope that this has helped you in uh, some way. I hope that my friends has imparted some of their thoughts. Um, and maybe like giving you some advice or some thoughts for you to think about. Yeah. Um, see you soon. I guess. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Oh, just yeah. like normal. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think you're just. So I, didn't, I didn't get like yeah. what podcast. I didn't really. I don't really watch podcast, so I don't. Oh, know. It's okay. It's okay. It's really okay. I'm I so just. Sorry. I was just going on based on your energies. Yeah. 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 I think. I think, I think it's because okay. today was a tired day. <laughs>